Hey everyone, welcome to the weekly update. I'm coming to you again from our showroom here at Fishy Business, where every week we're adding one more tank and one more design to the showroom floor. You definitely want to come check it out as it's going to be changing from week to week. And this is a new part of Fishy Business we're really excited for you to see. Gives you the opportunity to come in and have us work with you on a design in your home while getting the atmosphere of being in a home or office at the same time. So when you come in, definitely check out the new showroom. As you're looking around, grab one of us if you've got questions about designs. All the aquariums in the showroom, which this is kind of cool, are completely outfitted. So you can actually see what you would be getting if you had that particular tank. Um, that's really all for right now. Let's get on to the update and see what else came in. Hey all, it's Diana with your plant spotlight of the week. This week we're going to be talking about Pogo Salata. Pogo Salata is a great background plant. It gets tall, it gets bushy, it looks amazing. And this one is one of those, if you cut it off right where the stems break off, it will regrow even bushier. It's a great background plant, absolutely gorgeous. Hey all, Francois Neo here at Fishy Business in the new showroom. So. I have a lot of questions from customers when I'm here Friday, Saturday, and the night. And a lot of people see this two stand and canopy we do here at Fishy Business that's exclusive for us. And you can have it on the website. I work hard to put all this stand and canopy on the special page on the website, fishybusinessfc.com. But it will be just on delivery or on pickup only. We don't ship any of this stand and canopy for now. Unless that's change, come to the store. But all the question I have is, can you do this color? Can you do this size? Can you do these models? Can you do this design? The answer is yes. We can do everything you want. We really want to do something crazy for you. And I did a stand for a customer in Charlotte and I'm amazed by the quality of the stand and the stand is just amazing. So if you want a special color, if you want green, you want orange, you want the tiger logo, you want the Gamecock logo, you want everything you want, we can do it. So please come, see the standing canopy and ask us. I'm here for that and everybody's here for that. Chuck, me, Guy, everybody. So you have a question? Ask us on the website, ask us on Facebook and we can do whatever you dream of. Thank you. Okay, product spotlight this week. The importance of buffering your pH. Whether you have a saltwater tank or a freshwater tank, pH is very important in both. In some cases, we look at it more in freshwater than we do in saltwater and we forget about it in saltwater. If you have a saltwater aquarium and you are topping off with RO water or reverse osmosis water, which is fresh, you absolutely need to be putting something in there for the pH because it's very low. RO water is very low in pH, so you need a buffer for it. If you have a freshwater tank, you need to be checking your pH at least once a week because pH will often go down based on the amount of fish and feeding that you have in your tank. So whether you are fresh or salt, I've got something for one of you if you make a comment below. Uh, and we'll get you fixed up. If you got African cichlids, we'll get you something to buffer African cichlids. If you got discus, we'll get you something to buffer discus. And if you happen to be Stevo 29666, you won the Breeze Air Pump last week. Hey y'all, it's Diana with your saltwater portion of the weekly update. So this week I had a project. I made my own inverse system. I took some inspiration from Kevin, so I got a whole new system right here. Well, not new. And then I have my ORA system kind of expanded, so I'll be able to house a lot more ORA fish. So come in and check that out. These adorable little fellas are going to be your peppermint shrimp. Now peppermint shrimp eat Aptasia. So if you ever have an issue with Aptasia taking over your tank, these are a great addition to help take care of that. These beautiful little shrimp are going to be the harlequin shrimp. Now the harlequin shrimp are going to eat starfish, mainly going to be the Astrovinia starfish, but they can't will eat your others, your chocolate chips and stuff like that. So just keep that in mind, but people mostly get them to eat the Astrovinia supply in their tank. This is something I haven't had in a while. These are the Clarky clownfish. These guys are going to be a little bit more semi-aggressive than our Ocellaris clownfish. So just keep that in mind if you take anybody home. This adorable little fella here is the blue dot jawfish. Now these guys have amazing personality. They kind of just sit there, they'll kind of pick a corner, pick a rock, and they'll make it their little home. 
and they sit there and they just watch and they're really cute and they're great great coloration uh, these guys only get about four inches so they're great for a smaller tank this beautiful fish here is going to be your fox face this is a type of rabbit fish so it is venomous on his spikes as you can see he's flaring up right there they will eat um, hair algae and stuff like that they are known to nibble on coral on occasion so just keep that in mind but an absolutely stunning fish here we have the big eyed squirrel fish. This is another beautifully colored fish, that nice red color. The dorsal fin, just like the fox face, is venomous. So just keep that in mind whenever we're sticking our tank or hand in the tank. This adorable little fella here is a snowflake gill. This guy is full grown. So this is as big as they're gonna get. He eats clams on the half shell, pieces of silver sides, um, a great addition to a tank. How big is he right now? He's about one and a half, two feet, I want to say. He's amazing. So one of the other new things that's happening here at Fishy Business is we're finally getting a dedicated angelfish system. And we're doing it with Guy's tank. He took his tank down from his house out at the lake and we got it to end cap the plant section. So watch in the next couple of weeks as you will see a really cool 90 corner tank develop into a dedicated angelfish tank. Hi, it's Kevin. We got a lot of awesome freshwater fish in this week. I'm going to show you some of what I think is the best of what I have in, including some live bears and a couple oddballs. Two fish in the same tank that I'm particularly proud of this week. We have some big, beautiful, rotund balloon mollies. These fat little jokers are so adorable. The males and the females are both fat like little Christmas balls. Also in the tank, we have some rhino horn gobies. These little gobies will reach a maximum size of about two inches and kind of like the bumblebee gobies, they do best with a little bit of aquarium salt in there, but not necessarily full brackish. In the live bears, I have some stellar looking sword tails. Some of these I got from a local source. Some of these I got from a really good wholesaler. They all look fantastic. I've got males and females in here. Another adorable little goby I have in this week. We have the little bumblebee gobies. Bumblebee gobies, like the rhino horn gobies, also like a little bit of salt in their water. Not necessarily brackish, but a little bit of aquarium salt, approximately about a tablespoon per five to 10 gallons. My personal favorite nano fish is definitely the glow light tetras. They are amazing for color. They give you some of that bright fluorescent color like neons do kind of but in a different color being pinkish orange they are a lot more durable from my experience than neon tetras tend to be this is one you could actually use to cycle a brand new tank with excellent starter fish for a new tank these are candy cane tetras beautiful coloration with some pinkish and some whites blended in with them they do really well in schools of five or more one of my favorite small rainbow fish that we carry are the thread fin rainbows. This particular batch is awesome. Look at the long streamers on the males. Those will just keep getting longer with age. I can't see enough about this fish. They usually top out full size about two inches, but a lot of that is about fins. Oh my goodness, did I hit the jackpot with the large peacocks this week. I've got in beautiful large peacocks i've got these from a local breeder so these are the real colors of these fish they are not colored up from hormone inducing food or anything like that they are the real deal and they look incredible awesome batch of albino tiger barbs in they are just mesmerizing to watch in a large number barbs often do best if you keep them in groups of five seven or more just because it keeps them nipping at each other and not your other fish I got in a new batch of fire eels and they're getting really tame and eating from my hand now. It's really funny to me how personable eels actually get once they associate you with food. They love you. Batch of medium sized silver dollars in stock. Silver dollars are an excellent dither fish for most South American cichlids that aren't too aggressive. They get pretty large. Silver dollars get roughly around four inches in diameter on average. Bear in mind, there are many different types of subspecies that are sold as a silver dollar, however. This is 
my personal favorite freshwater fish. This is a Geophagus surinamensis. This is a really large specimen with awesome color and he's very nosy and inquisitive. Geophagus are a South American cichlid, however, they are not very territorial. They do really well with silver dollars, tinfoil, barbs, and iridescent sharks and stuff like that. A lot of different types of freshwater puffers. This is a South American puffer. These generally will reach about three to four inches maximum size. They are a total freshwater puffer. However, just like most other puffers, your best bet is to do them in a species only tank as they may nip at other fish. So, close of the show, I saved one very cool thing for the after part of the show. Any invertebrates that we have here in the stock, be it freshwater or saltwater, that's animals without backbones, for those of you who don't know what an invertebrate is, they are buy two, get one free this week. And that also includes live plants and live corals. Buy two, get one free, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for you. A combination of some of the sales that we've had this month that we haven't done in a really, really, really long time. And that's for the YouTube people. So it's a good thing that you hung on to the end of the episode. So God bless. Have a great weekend. Come see us. There's a pretty good reason to do it. Hey, it's Francois Nore. Neo. But hey, it's Francois Neo. So I'm sad. Chuck don't want me to make the weekly update today. So you have Chuck. But next time I will do it. Promised. Love you. God bless you. There's Diana with her hand in the fish tank. Smile, Diana. Smile. There's Diana with her hand in the fish tank. Frown, Diana. Frown. The many faces of Diana is how we'll end this episode. I was going to say something else, and then I started laughing at my own self. Thanks, everybody, for watching the weekly update. August is kind of coming to a close. There are some in-store specials that I've saved for the end of this broadcast. However, because I just thought about them, I haven't created them yet. So I am going to go now and create them and come back and film this part. <laughs> These are the two flies that are flying around my office. You get to have them back. Do I have to catch them? Yes. But they're yours. Um, we do buy two, get one free on corals this week. Is there any reason why we couldn't do that? Okay. Okay. What if we did buy two, get one free on invertebrates? Is there any reason we couldn't do that? That'd be great. Okay. That's our sale. Reconvening back here at the close of business. Heart. Off in the distance, I hear the sound of the telephone. Richard? Richard? Richard.